Thank you, Bruno. Uh, so thank you for inviting me. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm I'm going to present you some works about social metabolism. First, what is so social metabolism? And then uh, I will introduce you some very uh, uh, very fruitful perspectives and works and uh, some frameworks, some different frameworks about social metabolism. So um, my main, the main motivations of uh, uh, this talk uh, is to take into account both capital dynamics and biophysical flows dynamics. And I think that uh, current debates need uh, uh, really uh, both dimensions. Um, and I will present here um, some works that link uh, those uh, biophysical flows with uh, long-run analysis, analysis of uh, uh, capitalism dynamics. And I, I also want to highlight some uh, interdisciplinary works that combine social metabolism with political economy, environmental history, political ecology, and so forth. Actually, I began uh, with the first point, so let's say uh, in 2017, uh, I come from uh, a Marxist tradition and uh, uh, I will uh, show you the regulation theory briefly, uh, which is uh, inspired by Marx. And uh, so I began to, uh, uh, to, 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 to work on this kind of topic, so linking uh, uh, material flows analysis uh, for a long period with the analysis of capitalism. Um, but now, uh, for uh, four or five years, I began to um, focus more on uh, uh, specific material flows and to link those uh, uh, analyses of uh, more specific material flows to, uh, uh, to link that with environmental history, uh, political ecology, and so forth. So I, I will also show how to bring uh, uh, this social metabolism concept and framework to sociology, uh, 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 environmental history, and so forth. So those are uh, the main goals of this presentation. Um, and yeah, we will discuss that uh, later. I hope it will be clear. If, if, it, if it's not, just like ask if there is some concept and something some definition missing. Um, the, 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 the sound is good, yeah? Okay. So basically, I will, I will start with uh, ecological economics, um, which has emerged in the, in the 60s uh, uh, against, let's say, the neoclassical framework. And the, um, the main point of course, was that the uh, neoclassical framework, which you all know, I guess, uh, had no material flows. So it was uh, uh, describing and analyzing the economy by analyzing only uh, uh, financial flows, and uh, let's say uh, consumption, investment, uh, the, 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 the consumers, the state, and so forth. And um, they, a lot of uh, physicians and biologists also, they thought that was a bit uh, stupid <laughs> since the si economic system was a part of uh, 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 society and a part of the uh, biosphere, in, in, in embodied in the biosphere. And this is the main, um, the main move they, they, they did actually. So this is like, let's say, uh, of course this is very schematical, but the, the neoclassical vision of the economy, so only with uh, 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 financial flows between uh, here are consumers and firms and so forth. And here is, let's say, the, the, the biophysical vision of the economy um, with the economy uh, uh, embodied in, a, in an ecosystem uh, with uh, energy flows here, uh, recycling and material flows here, which, uh, which are uh, uh, indicated. So this is a completely different vision of uh, uh, one economy. In, uh, and in, instead of counting uh, dollars, uh, you count tons or joules or uh, other uh, physical units. And that was super interesting. Uh, I could talk about that uh, uh, for a long time. Um, some, some authors are, are well known. I guess you know maybe Georges Kuhogen, which come from uh, physics and which applied uh, uh, some uh, second law of thermodynamics to uh, uh, this system. So this is really a systemic approach. That, that's really important. They see uh, uh, the economy as a subsystem of a more uh, um, 
a, a larger system. And um, they had really this, this vision of the economy, let's say, as an organism, you know? And that's really important. And this comes from a, a, um, a change in the, ecolo in the, 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 the uh, ecological science itself. In the, ecolo in the ecological science, there, there were uh, uh, new uh, uh, researchers, uh, and, th and this vision was uh, uh, becoming dominant with uh, 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 th like thinking uh, an ecosystem. The, the, the words uh, uh, say the, the, uh, the, the vision uh, itself. So thinking of, of, uh, of an organism as a, or, 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 um, fr um, let's say, uh, an environment as an ecosystem, a system. And that, that was uh, uh, really important. And there are now uh, really interesting works in environment history and uh, uh, showing uh, like the, the 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 novelty of this vision, which which was not the case before, uh, the, the the environment ha has uh, uh, had another uh, various um, conceptions before that. So they 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 come they came from uh, physics, uh, biology, uh, ecology, and they applied uh, all those uh, um, uh, tools to uh, the economic system. Well, and uh, they have this concept which is the called the metabolism uh, and the metabolism comes from biology of course so the, the metabolism is defined here uh, like the process by which an organism builds up and maintains its structure through exchanging energy and mater materials with with its environment through throughout its life okay so that's come from uh, 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 biology and when they 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 call that social metabolism uh, i read here again uh, social metabolism is the killing between society and the natural environment to reproduce its biophysical structure. Society requi requires a continuous flows of energy and materials that need to be extracted from and eventually released to the environment. So when they add the quote social uh, word, uh, of course it means that uh, uh, society is there and uh, it adds, uh, it must add, let's say, uh, social relations or something like this. And then the last, yeah, the, the last point, uh, social metabolism refers to the set of theories and methodological tools that allow analy analyzing a society's biophysical behavior. And uh, here I mentioned two authors which uh, uh, define social metabolism, uh, uh, Marina Fischer-Kowalski uh, uh, and uh, uh, Weiss. And they are Austrian and they have uh, uh, now a collective book and this comes from the, the collective book called so Social Metabolism. Uh, no, socio-ecological metabolism. I don't know. I, anyway, I, I have the ref reference. And so th n now it's n not only the, the, the concept, but it's uh, a whole, the whole framework and uh, like, like they say, uh, the whole uh, set of methodological tools uh, that I will present uh, in a few minutes. Now, if you uh have one an example this is uh one of my favorite example and uh, i know gilles uh, uh, knows it very well uh so this is the metabolism of brussels in the 70s uh this is only to illustrate this uh biophysical vision of the economy of brussels in the 70s so just to contrast with the neoclassic neoclassical vision so here you i i i feel this is really uh, uh yeah, really powerful. So you, you, you describe, you analyze Brussels uh, with electricity, coal, uh, uh, gas, uh, 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 water, uh, waste, uh, a lot of emissions and so forth. So this is Brussels for one year, the, the, all the biophysical flows that are linked with the city of Brussels in one year. And so this is the description, uh, let's say a, a brief description um, of, and, and they, they I, I, I just noticed it now. They call it the ecosystem of Bruxelles. So this is the Brussels ecosystem. So as if it was uh, uh, an environment uh, uh, itself. So uh, um, you can... Ah, I, I will move this because there are a few sentences. Can I move this vertical? No. Maybe... Uh -huh. Ah, no. You know, I just want to put it <laughs> to mask it. No? So it appears anyway. Uh -huh. 
because I had uh, I, I have some sentences or maybe ah that's a pity yeah okay because I have many sentences below so well anyway um, what was written here <laughs> was that you 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 can indeed uh, analyze and study all kind of biophysical flows, not only uh, material flows and energy flows, but also uh, uh, water, nitrogen, phosphorus, and so forth. And uh, here we have the biggest spe specialist of those kind of flows uh, uh, in, uh, in France. Um, so this is only one illustration. And uh, what I want... Ah, does it work? Yeah. Uh, and here is the main, let's say, framework of, this, uh, of the Austrian school. Um, uh, which describe the metabolism of the economy of one, one country. So this, here, are, are the boundary, uh, here is the boundary of the national territory. So uh, uh, we, we saw Brussels and now we see uh, one entire country. And you can uh, count all imports from abroad, okay? all exports. Okay? So this is trade, but with this, this biophysical vision. You can also count all the domestic extraction. So all the extraction coming from the, the national country. Um, and then you have waste uh, uh, from the country to the, the environment, uh, from the, the, the system here to its environment. And there are other indicators that I will, I will uh, explain a little bit later. So here are only uh, two or three in indicators, and then I, I will explain um, the others uh, a little bit later. The, the first one, so it's, it's uh, the domestic extraction, DE. The physical trade balance, I will, I will use it later, so uh, remember that it is the, the, the trade balance, but with this physical vision, so it's called the physical trade balance, and it, it means imports minus exports. And to put it uh, all together, they created this domestic material consumption, DMC, which is the uh, domestic extraction plus the uh, physical trade balance. It means that it is all the domestic extraction plus what comes from uh, abroad minus uh, all the exports. So it's uh, uh, the, let's say, one indicator that uh, uh, show the all the material consumption from for one country in one year. But uh, I can already mention that this in is th this indicator is really bad, since it, it the addition uh, it, it adds very different uh, 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 commodities. The domestic extractions are raw materials. Whereas the physical trade balance are uh, uh, most of them are manufactured materials, wi which embodied a lot of ma a lot of materials. So that's why they created the material footprint, MF, which is a more uh, uh, accurate indicator to to uh, describe the material consumption of uh, one country. So, uh, but l l I will talk about that a little bit later. But l remember, so the, the PTB uh, uh, refers to physical trade balance, and I, I won't use the DMC here. But uh, uh, I, 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 well, so I, I, I can mention, and it's a, uh, an interesting fact that for many years, this was the main indicator for the uh, uh, European Union to describe the uh, the materiality of one country. So they they had um, dematerialization goals for the Euro European Union, and they they were using this indicator, which is really bad. So to 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 decrease the DMC. You just uh, uh, have to decrease your uh, uh, domestic extraction and imports a little bit more. So you just uh, 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 offshore a lot of industries and you will dematerialize. Since you do not take into account the imported hidden flows. That's the main point. So this is quite important. You know, when, when uh, uh, you, you uh, 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 those indicators are never neutral. And when, of course, it's, it's still useful for some reason. And it's still and and it's very uh, uh, um, easy to 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 calculate, uh, th and that's the reason why they, they use it for uh, so many years. But uh, uh, it was a, a huge problem when the the 2020 uh, uh, goals uh, uh, for the uh, dematerialization goals for the European Union was, was were using this DMC uh, indicator. This is only one example, but all, all those indicators uh, can be very problematic because they frame the discussion, you know. You, 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 you will optimize 
and we, you will try to optimize one indicator uh, 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 without thinking of what, what is invisible there. So that, that's the point. Uh, I, will, I will describe all these indicators later in my, in my, my presentation. So this, this was a first introduction. Um, now there are, I, I, I have this, this really brief summary of what can you do with uh, 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 social metabolism and where is social metabolism compared to other, uh, uh, um, let's say, frameworks, the theoretical frameworks in uh, economics. So if you don't have any biophysical flows nor power relation, then you are doing neoclassical economics. Okay? That's like uh, uh, what they do. So this is number one. Then if you add uh, biophysical flows but you are still uh, thinking uh, uh, using uh, the cl neoclassical tools, you are basically doing industrial ecology or ecological modeling and this is now, now becoming the mainstream today because it, it, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, all the, the green growth uh, discussion, all the uh, circular economy discussion and so forth are, are exactly here. They don't care about power relations, let's say. They don't care about capitalism, they don't care about uh, uh, other social relations and power relations, okay? Uh, then there is also, and that's really interesting, you can also have a, 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 um, a framework with a lot of power relations, but without any biophysical flows. And that, that was the case for the, the orthodox Marxism and also for regulation theory, which I, I knew uh, uh, a few years ago, but also uh, for the sociology of Bourdieu. Bourdieu uh, uh, develops uh, 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 really nice works, I, I, I love his works, but uh, about uh, old, a lot of different uh, social relations and uh, uh, social fields and so forth, but there is no biophysical world in this, in this analysis, in his analysis. And uh, there are others, uh, 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 structuralist uh, uh, frameworks here, which only analyze the, 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 the world uh, through uh, social relations and that's it. Material uh, uh, d uh, d don't, don't, uh, uh, don't, uh, don't count. Well, and social metabolism is supposed to be here. So. Uh, I, I, I say it's supposed to be here because um, the, Vianney, the, the, the Austrian school, which developed the, the, this concept and this framework, are not so much taking power relations into account. They say they, they do it, but I, I'm a bit, yeah, I'm, a, I'm all, uh, it's a, a yeah, they, they don't do it very well. They just say, yeah, there, are, there is capitalism and so forth, but they don't, don't explain you how how uh, uh, they combine, uh, how, to, co how uh, uh, to combine power relations with bi biophysical flow. Th so they are something, some, some, somewhere here, let's say. It's uh, of course uh, uh, schematical. But then uh, in, the fourth, uh, 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 in the fourth position, there are a lot of works and very different works, of course. And it, it depends on how you conceive the social world. If you are uh, uh, close to a more uh, a Marxist approach, now they have developed a lot of eco-Marxist uh, works, uh, uh, eco-feminist works, uh, there is a, a huge work uh, on environmental justice. Uh, so you can take all social relations and all power relations, class, gender, gender, race and so forth, and combine this with biophysical flows. So there are a lot, a lot of works. And that's why I, 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 I will present in the, in the, um, a, a little bit later not only economics, uh, 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 because this, this, this field here, this place here, is full of uh, sociologists, geographers, uh, uh, anthropologists, and so forth, because they all are, uh, a lot of so social scientists are interested in this, uh, 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 in this combination of power relations with biophysical flows. Uh, and yeah, I didn't mention political ecology and post-growth, degrowth, and many, many others, uh, uh, actually. I will present uh, some of them. Uh, but I, I hope this clarify a little bit uh, um, the different positions uh, today. Um, now, up, does it work? Yeah. Uh, here is one example, and this is the most famous example, I think, of uh, industrial ecology. Uh, so they 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 mapped the. In the industrial uh, city of Kalundborg in Denmark, in I think it was in the beginning of the 90s or late 80s, and they so this and they mapped all the the sectors and so here there is a, a refinery, power station, a municipality, 
uh, cement industry, GPROC, and so forth. Anyway, a lot of uh, firms and all the biophysical flows uh, 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 between uh, those firms. And what they did is to optimize those flows. So they, 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 they took a little bit of, uh, uh, I don't know, waste from here and uh, used that it for the fertilizer industry. And uh, they used the, the, the heat of the, this industry to, 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 uh, to another industry and so forth. So they, that, that was the, 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 the goal of this, uh, um, the conclusion of this work about the, the, the Kalunborg. And it, I, I just present it because I think this is still the, this is the mainstream today uh, on uh, 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 environmental issues. So th this is how they conceive environment. So uh, as a, uh, uh, and we can say this is the metabolism of uh, Kallenberg, of course, uh, you know. So th this is to say that here you, you don't see any uh, power relations, you don't see any institutions, any actors, any uh, social groups, uh, and so forth. You know, you can map the environment like this, and you will only see uh, you will on only uh, 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 um, have a good description of, of those uh, uh, flows, but without thinking why they are there. Wh what is the, the why there are uh, a G prox uh, what, What's the history behind this scene? What are the power relations behind here? Where are the workers? Where are uh, and so forth? So you have many questions we which are not uh, in the picture, and they they do they. Uh, 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 they they proceed in al always in the same way. So they analyze the metabolism, and then they they want to optimize it. So they they look uh, to the future. They don't don't look back. So how did how did we get here? That that's not a question. So so where we want to go? But I think I think it's quite problematic because since when you you don't know how you 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 you, you arrive you you get to this uh, situation, uh, uh, it, it it's kind of uh, uh, difficult to see uh, uh, where to go. Um, so well, so this is I I, I call a, a, an apolitical. Uh, uh, which is actually very political, but uh, a vision of the environment. Well, now uh, to criticize uh, my, my, my home country, let's say, uh, regulation theory, which I, uh, I liked a lot uh, uh, in the past years. Um, so uh, uh, I, I, won't, I won't describe all the regulation theory, but um, I, 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 I adhere a, a few years ago to, to to this, uh, to this framework, which uh, conceived the, the capitalism uh, um, uh, by uh, five or six uh, uh, social relations, uh, including the state. So the state has a social relation. Of course, the wage relation, uh, the, 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 let's say, uh, 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 trade relations, and so forth. Money relation. So that's uh, the, uh, this this conception of the the capitalism was uh, really helpful for me uh, and i still think it, it is but here if you see like the description of the fordism uh, epoch in france uh, with those uh, five big uh, social uh, relation He's, here is the wage relation uh, uh, with the compromise uh, with between capital and uh, um, the uh, labor uh, here is the state and so forth i, I won't describe it but it's it's really uh, yeah it, it for me it it was it, it was astonishing because there is no material at all no one there is no not even one gram or one ton of nothing they just don't care <laughs> so that's that's crazy when you think about Fordism and all the coal and all the, the uh, later the, the 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 oil and many other materials of course uh, the cereals and so that was, uh, uh, yeah, I was a little bit skeptical that it, uh, uh, I could use that to explain the world today and all the environmental issues. I was convinced that the capitalism was destroying, let's say, <laughs> the planet. But if you have this conception of capitalism, you don't understand why it is destroying the planet because it, it, it's only about social relations. So that's, that's you know, I, I, I was a bit skeptical. Anyway, that was just to, to mention one of those uh, four uh, um, conception, uh, uh, one of those four uh, framework. And here, yeah, this is uh, uh, one uh, uh, prototype of, of uh, this uh, analysis uh, of uh, capitalism without uh, any material flows. Well, but then uh, for a decade now, a little bit, a little bit more, uh, 20, 20 years, let's say, 
uh, there are a lot of uh, Marxists doing uh, great jobs, uh, and I won't uh, uh, present uh, all of them. Um, for instance, there is a uh, growing literature about the world ecology, which is uh, starting from um, the tradition of uh, world system analysis by uh, uh, Fernand Brodel uh, and Emmanuel, Emmanuel uh, Wallerstein. Um, so they are adding a lot of ecologies in the, in the analysis of capitalism, still using the world system analysis, but adding uh, all those ecologies from the south and all uh, this, uh, uh, and a lot of environmental issues. I will talk about the second one, uh, which also uh, relies on a, a Marxist tradition uh, called the theory of unequal exchange by uh, many uh, uh, South American uh, economists, um, in the which was developed in the 60s, 70s, and so forth. And they, they did a little bit the same, starting from this uh, Marxist vision. They add, and this is in the, even in the title, uh, uh, the ecological unequal exchange. So they add the, the word ecological. I, and I, 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 won't, I will, sorry, I will uh, present this one uh, in, a, in a few slides. Um, and then I, I, I tried to, to add <laughs> some ecological perspective to uh, the regulation theory in my PhD thesis and in uh, some, some articles. And I, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if I will uh, uh, follow this, this path. I'm, I'm more in, <coughs> in interdisciplinary works now, but uh, uh, I, I tried I try this for some years. Now, uh, so I, I will talk about uh, the ecological unequal exchange and also about some uh, uh, really, really interesting literature about material stocks. Well, so first, uh, what is the ecologically unequal exchange? And I will begin with the physical trade balance. So recall, I, 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 I ask you to, <laughs> to remind this indicator. So it, it uh, represents the trade balance with these biophysical visions. So here we have only tons, okay? There is no euro, no dollar, and, and so forth. And uh, this is um, physical trade balance represents imports minus exports. So it's the opposite of the usual trade balance in uh, monetary flows. And uh, I collected uh, the data for two centuries uh, in France. So I, I went to the archives and I found uh, all the archives from the several ministries of agriculture, mines, uh, uh, I don't know, fisheries, uh, everything. Um, and what is interesting here, I, I won't talk too much about archives, but I, I was fascinated by it. Um, everything exists in tons. So the state, in France, I had this biophysical vision of the economy for two centuries. Always, I, I, did not, I didn't know, I didn't expect that. I expected some f material flows and then I, I was convinced that I had to make uh, a difficult calculation, estimation, uh, uh, using uh, you know, uh, some indicators. No, 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 the state had always a biophysical vision of the economy, that's really interesting. So everything is in ton, you have a column, you have one column for uh, in France uh, uh, in, the, in the past, and the other column uh, with uh, the, this biophysical uh, vision, and mo mostly in tons. Sometimes you, you have uh, other uh, uh, units, but mostly in tons. So that was really helpful, and uh, the, the French state is wa was super uh, strong and, and collected, uh, well, the, the, the archives is super precise for uh, 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 decades and decades. So we collected everything, um, and here, so uh, to explain the graph, so this is the, the physical trade balance per capita. So uh, we, 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 we don't see the demographic, uh, uh, um, the, the, the growth of the population, so since we, 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 we present it uh, per capita. Um, so since it represents mi imports minus exports, here you, you only see for f these four, ca four categories, so biomass in green, metals, non-metallic minerals, and fossil uh, fuels, uh, so those are the main four categories in the social metabolism uh, framework. If you, you, if you are interested in, in those uh, uh, indicators and uh, 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 aggregates, you can uh, look at the Eurostat, the Eurostat methodological uh, uh, report, so they uh, uh, always present those main four categories. And uh, since it is min import minus export, you have only net imports and net exports. Uh, so what is uh, above the x-axis uh, represent the uh, net imports, and what is uh, below represent net exports, okay? 
And basically, for 200 years, France was always uh, a net importer of the rest of the world. So, uh, receive always more materials than it exports, always, for two centuries. And if you look at the details, what comes the most are fossil fuels. Okay, so if I can uh, just mention some, yeah, some year, let's say in the 70s, every uh, 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 French citizen was consuming, was importing, let's say, uh, three tons of fossil fuels uh, uh, each year. Okay, so that's, that's if I read, uh, this is 75, so if I read this point, it represents all the fossil fuels. So three tons per year uh, 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 for each uh, French citizen. And what you see is that now, uh, nowadays, uh, the France economy, French capitalism is importing everything but biomass. It is exporting a lot of biomass and cereals. Um, but the picture uh, was uh, quite uh, surprising for us um, because we th there is a, uh, the same work for uh, the UK and if you see the same uh, physical trade balance for the UK you will see a, a huge uh, uh, um, a huge histograms uh, 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 below uh, the x-axis which represent coals coal so uh, the, the UK was exporting a lot of coal during the 19th century. So for some decades, the UK was exporting more than importing, for instance. This is not the case for France. The, it is the same for the US. The US was, for some decades, exporting more than it was importing. So our thesis and our argument was, uh, uh, the, 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 we, I think this is the, the title of our article, the, 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 French, the French Parasite. Okay? So uh, it's a, a kind of parasite uh, absorbing the material of the, uh, of the rest of the world for two centuries. Well, so uh, now that I have presented the physical trade balance for France, uh, yeah, here, here, here is a, this is a, ah, you can see anything, sorry. Well, anyway, uh, this is just to, to mention that uh, here I, I collected the, the details for fossil fuels, so only for fossil fuels, the imports, which is, was the most important for the Fordism, which regulations don't care about. <laughs> so uh, 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 it, it, it reached uh, 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 more than uh, uh, 100 million for, uh, um, in, the, in the 70s. And what, was impor what is important, he important here is in the 60s, okay, I, I will just describe the graph because since we don't see anything, but in the 60s, the, the, the oil was imported from Algeria. And the 60s in France was the, 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 like the, the growth period, like really per excellence. Like it was the, 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 the GDP was, was uh, increasing a lot every year. And this, this was thanks to the, uh, uh, this blue curve uh, which represents Algeria, the Algerian oil. And I did a work about this with uh, some colleagues. And this is al also to, to, uh, uh, to show that once you have the big picture, you can select some uh, uh, specific material flows and go into the details. So here, uh, of course, in the, uh, in the trade uh, archives, uh, you have all the countries which were uh, exporting and importing uh, 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 oil, and oil and oil products uh, uh, from and to uh, France. So it, the oil was not coming from the Middle East, it, was, it, 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 com it came from uh, Algeria, and what what is important? Well, what is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a bit bizarre here? It was uh, it's that uh, the the oil was imported uh, after the independence of Algeria, and here this represents the nationalization. This uh, strong degrowth of the uh, 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 of imports of uh, Algeria uh, oil from Algeria. This is due to uh, the, the the nationalization of oil in seventy one. Uh, in Algeria, and then, then uh, Saudi Arabia and I think uh, co uh, Iraq. So here are the Middle East countries uh, were dominant uh, afterwards. But uh, so this is also to mention this dimension of uh, uh, um, this is one dimension and classical dimension of the uh, ecological unequal exchange. Well, here is the same uh, awful <laughs> graph. I think it's really ugly. <laughs> Uh, from uh, these uh, those uh, uh, colleagues from uh, 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 Vienna, uh, and they, they 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 presented the physical trade balance for Japan, and Japan is uh, <laughs> is a bit like France, but it's really an island, so it's uh, like 
a total pirate. It's, it's, it's never, it, there is never uh, net exports. But those are really uh, uh, exceptions uh, in the world. If you look at uh, South America, so uh, here are, again, uh, I, I selected the physical trade balance because we can discuss a lot on only with this indicator. So here are the physical trade balance for all countries in South America. And I, I won't describe all of them, but you see usually that the, 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 the histograms are below the x-axis, which means that they are exporting all, the, all, the, all their material flows. So uh, uh, except, I think, so Brazil a lot, Bolivia also, Costa Rica, which is a really small country, is a bit different. Salvador also is a really small country, so it's a bit different. Ecuador is exporting a lot. Venezuela is exporting a lot, and so forth. Uruguay, Peru, uh, well. So you have the opposites. You, we, w I showed you Japan and, and France, and here you uh, uh, have all those countries. So this is uh, for the 20th century for all those countries. And, um, and of course this is linked to, and uh, this is well known, and this, uh, you can link that with the, 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 um, the, the unequal uh, exchange, the eco economic uh, equal exchange, and the, the theory of uh, dependency uh, uh, of the uh, South American authors in the 60s. Uh, this is extractivism. Th these are, uh, uh, this is really uh, well known. They are just exporting uh, uh, raw materials with uh, uh, very little uh, 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 value added. Of course, the, the extractivism uh, changed over the time. Of course, it's not like always the same. So in the, in the 60s, for instance, uh, South America was exporting uh, bio uh, material flows uh, mostly to the, to the US. In the 2000s, uh, uh, it was a little bit more to the Europe. Then you, you see that uh, uh, Asia is importing and importing still more uh, material flows from uh, South America. And in the 2000s, here is uh, 2016, uh, 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 China is really absorbing all mat uh, material flows from uh, South America. And this is, uh, there is a huge literature about neo-extractivism showing that the dependency is changing. It's not, it's not, uh, uh, um, O of course, it's not uh, uh, only with uh, Europe or the US, and they are. They even talk about the Beijing consensus. So there, w there was the Washington consensus in the uh, 80s and 90s, and now there is the Beijing consensus. There, so they are exchanging with uh, China and uh, uh, hoping to benefit from uh, from it. So this is only to mention this new literature, which is, you know, uh, analyzing. A, a little bit more, uh, 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 and more precisely, let's say, uh, how, we, how the structure of is changed, because it's not uh, uh, a fixed uh, uh, configuration, of course. Now, um, there is this fantastic work of uh, Christian Dörninger and uh, authors, which is really, uh, really, a really wonderful paper, because they take not only material flows into account, but also millions of hours of work uh, 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 billions of hectares, so land, and also I think water. Uh, so this is embodied labor, embodied energy, embodied uh, um, material flows and land. And I think they also added uh, water somewhere. I, I, I'm not sure, but so they they divided the world in five uh, uh, continents, let's say, but not the, the, the normal continents. They divide in five groups, sorry, not um, so high income countries, uh, low income countries, uh, uh, middle income countries, let's say, China, which is uh, uh, like uh, one group alone, the red one, and so forth. So I, I won't describe the whole, uh, they, they work, it's really great. This is only one graph, uh, which is basically saying that, uh, so, the rich countries, uh, high income countries are uh, 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 importing, so this is again uh, imports, okay? So they are absorbing billions and billions and billions of tons each year from the rest of the world. And it is the opposite for all other groups. All other groups are sending materials. For uh, 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 energy is exactly the same. A little difference here with the uh, th th there are, of course, variations uh, and so forth. Uh, concerning lands, China is also benefiting from uh, land uh, for, from other countries. Uh, so China is here. 
Uh, and he, here is, I, I found this really interesting. This, are, this is an estimation of millions of hours needed to produce those uh, uh, commodities. Okay? So we are benefiting of uh, uh, hundreds, I, I'm guessing, I don't know the, the number, but uh, hundreds of uh, uh, millions of hours uh, from uh, work from abroad. And I found this was really interesting because they, are, they were adding more and more indicators to, uh, um, to valid this theory, this uh, uh, ecological uh, uh, unequal exchange theory, because it's systematic. It's not like one year we had this. No, no, it's systematic. Every year we have more or less the same, okay? And uh, they did it for, uh, uh, so this is from, uh, yeah, from 1990. Um, and they also, yeah, well, this is uh, well known, but they also show that the value added per ton of raw materials embodied in export uh, uh, is 11 times higher in high income countries than in those with the lowest income. Uh, uh, uh. So, of course, when you send a ton to uh, another country, uh, the, the, the hour needed to, 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 to produce it, uh, the materials needed to, uh, the, the, what it represents in dollars and so forth is really, really different. And this, this was true for uh, many, th there are a lot of studies um, and um, the pioneer work is from Alf Hornborg, which is an eco-Marxist, really, really interesting really uh, nice uh, uh, author. He's an anthropologist. Uh, 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 and he, he did this first work in the 90s, and he was uh, uh, showing the uh, uh, ecological unequal exchange between Great Britain and the US. Um, and in, in, this, in that time, uh, the US was sending cotton to uh, Great Britain, and uh, Great Britain was producing uh, manufactured uh, textiles and uh, 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 products with a, a lot of uh, um, value added. And he showed that when the, the let's say for uh, one dollar of exchange, so when the UK was importing one dollar and the US was importing on one dollar, the, 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 uh, 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 they were embodying very different uh, tons uh, of work, uh, hours, and this was slavery work, actually, uh, uh, work done by, by slaves and so forth. So he was, he was adding in this small, uh, in this small article, it is, this is an article from 98, uh, I, I have the reference later, and he was showing with uh, one, one, uh, uh, with the one uh, in this article, with this example of the cotton and the, uh, uh, the textile industry, uh, the, the, this combination of biophysical flows with power relations. Because he was talking about slavery, he was talking about capitalism developing uh, uh, in the UK. The, the, the textile industry in the UK was like the, the core of the capitalism in the, begin in the beginning of the 19th century. So it was really, really important. And they, they did a, a calculus, um, he, he, he did not, but other, other, others uh, uh, calculated the land needed to produce all the cotton that was consumed by the textile industry. And there was not enough land in the UK to produce all this cotton. So it, it was not even possible, you know? So that, that's really interesting. Like, not there, is there was not even uh, uh, land enough to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to produce all the, those uh, uh, textile uh, products. Well, to sum up, um, the thesis that asymmetric net transfers of resources, including labor, uh, as I said, and others, from peripheral to core areas of the global uh, uh, economic system. So Global South is, uh, of course, uh, 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 fueling uh, the Global North uh, uh, growth, and that's uh, systematic, that's a structure of the capitalism for centuries. <laughs> and, uh, of course, it's changing, okay? It's not always true for every country in the world. It there, there are a little bit of change, and we need, as social scientists, we need to explain why it's changing, of course. But uh, still, it's really st there are a lot of empirical evidences. And still today, of course, it, it, it didn't change. So that, that's really... Uh, yeah, here I, I, I... This is the cumulates uh, 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 flows that uh, high-income countries absorb from the rest of the world. So they, they absorb more than two uh, uh, billions of tons of uh, 200 sorry billions of tons of uh, uh, materials from the rest of the world. So, that, so this is net net uh, import. Well, now um, you can link that. This is to now. This is 
this was, let's say, uh, an eco-Marxist explanation of capitalism. So this was really uh, still in the economist tradition. But you can link that with uh, political ecology, and you can link that with, uh, 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 s s let's say, environmental sociology. And I found this is this was very interesting. And there is a growing literature in the uh, South America, uh, uh, for instance, which is linking environment and co environmental conflicts to uh, those uh, to the system to the, the structure uh, of the, the the capitalism. And they are mapping all uh, environmental conflicts and explaining which activity uh, uh, is uh, concerned, which uh, firm, uh, 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 how many billions uh, or millions of tons uh, is extracted there, and so forth. And there is a website, uh, so I, I just mentioned here, uh, which is the environmentaljusticeatlas.org, uh, which maps, and you can, you can select uh, one conflict, and uh, there is even a map for several films, so you can look at, uh, I don't know, the, the Valley uh, films, so this is a, one of the biggest uh, firm of um, mining firm in the world. It's a Brazilian firm, and you you can so also select all the, the conflicts associated to the valley. And so they are uh, uh, thinking of uh, the the let's say the structural conditions of those uh, environmental conflicts. And again, you can uh, think of those uh, uh, conflicts. Uh, through uh, gender, race, and so forth, because uh, usually uh, 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 minorities, uh, classes, uh, 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 women are more affected by uh, uh, than others by those uh, um, activities. So there are uh, really a huge literature um, on uh, environmental justice that you can uh, uh, really associated to those the study of the uh, social metabolism. And I need to mention also uh, Juan Martinez Allier which is really an uh, inspiring uh, uh, researcher. Um, with, uh, and he, he, yeah, he and his team in Barcelona, they, they, uh, they implemented this atlas, and he, he bringing these uh, new uh, aspects to, the, to social scientists in the late 80s. So Juan Martinez Allier. Well, now, so th that was uh, one interesting literature, uh, the Ecological Unequal Exchange. But now I want to talk a little bit about material stocks, which were absent for decades of the, the from the social metabolism uh, framework. So if I if I if I come back to my my uh, to this to this uh, uh, picture, so I did not mention in the middle the socio-economic stocks. What are those uh, uh, those stocks? Uh, they are uh, uh, human artifacts, so uh, buildings, roads, uh, machines, and so forth. And what they find uh, um, in the in the recent papers when they were uh, studying. So le this is the the global domestic extraction. So this is uh, all uh, uh, material is extracted in the world. So there is no import nor export, of course. So this is global, and they find that the, the, the most important material flow was non-metallic minerals. And this is mainly sand and gravel. So the most important material flows on Earth is sand and gravel. And they, it was not the case in the past. It was not the case in the 50s or 60s. And uh, here the fossil fuels, yeah, sorry, it's a bit bizarre because usually fossil fuels are uh, gray, but here they are uh, uh, orange. Uh, and fossil fuels are, or are also increasing, of course, but not that much. So what the main fact, material fact in the last century is the growing uh, extraction of sand and gravel. And actually, uh, whereas biomass and uh, fossil fuels are dissipated, yeah, sorry. Sand and gravel, yeah. Sand, sand and gravel, yeah. Sorry, my my English is really bad. That Friday afternoon, <laughs> I'm so, I'm so tired. Um, and so the the if you look at the percentage of the uh, uh, extraction uh, of um, of cons construction materials in the beginning of uh, the 20th century and uh, 2015, so it it so this is the percentage. So the, this is a relative part. It grows from uh, uh, 18% to 55%. So most of the uh, material flows today are uh, sand and gravel. So 55% uh, of the total. And uh, yeah, uh, whereas uh, biomass and fossil fuels are dissipated, 
because we consume it and it, it doesn't uh, 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 it, 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 it it doesn't last for, uh, 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 they, they say usually that it doesn't last for more, more than one year. Sand and gravel uh, uh, remains. And so they, they thought about, uh, to think about uh, stocks. And if you think about all the material stocks, so again, all the buildings, all roads, all the infrastructure, uh, all the machines and so forth, the growth uh, uh, of the material stocks is more uh, uh, more important than the, the growth of uh, um, material flows, the, ex the annual extraction. So this, this, you see, uh, uh, this is a modeling because it's it's uh, too smooth. <laughs> um, but uh, they model it like this, and uh, you see really a huge exponential. Um, and so I, I, I read it for you. So this cons the, the categories are aggregates. So this is sand and gravel. Concrete, which is sand and gravel. Asphalt, which is sand and gravel, with bitumen, but it is mainly sand and gravel. And then you have a little bit of bricks, a little bit of wood, glass, but really uh, this, this is the tiny, tiny uh, 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 flows, uh, stocks here. So the world is made of sand and gravel. And there was a paper in 2020 uh, uh, showing that human-made uh, materials now uh, outweighs Earth's entire biomass. So there, there is more human artifacts on Earth than forests and all uh, trees and all animals. So th this, is, this, is, this is what it means. And um, so I was, I was of course uh, uh, surprised, <laughs> let's say. And, um, and they were also, and they, this is really recent, they did, they did it. So this, is, this paper is from 2019, but th this literature ha began maybe in 2010. So it's, it's really a, a recent uh, uh, topic. And so it and yeah, I will present the next slide. Um, it is mo those stocks in uh, this is for the uh, European Union. Uh, the stocks is mainly uh, uh, consists mainly of large infrastructure, more than buildings. I was surprised. So not uh, what what matters are of course both matters, but uh, uh, what uh, what is uh, uh, more heavy are the roads. One third of all the material stocks in the world are roads, R just roads. And uh, if if you look at the European Union here, they they counted it, and so uh, yeah, I, I do, it doesn't matter. The, the but the roads are more uh, uh, important than the buildings in the uh, European Union. And here we are just talk talking about roads, not airports, not the harbor, uh, I don't know, trains, high-speed trains, or, or other other infrastructure. Uh, yeah, the railways. Yeah, the railway is here, but it's not uh, not so important. But what 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 changed when they they added the material stocks is the vision because they put it in the in the at the core of the the, the analysis, and you see all the inflows coming into the stocks and all the outflows, uh, 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 which are uh, uh, produced by the stocks. And this picture was really. Uh, uh, Incredible. Well, it changed completely my work um, because I saw that the expansion of the, this stock, so all the flows that create new stocks, new roads, new buildings, and so forth, represented in the European Union uh, 700 million. Okay, let's uh, let's say 700 million for uh, 2009. And the maintenance and the replacement of the exi existing stock represented more than one billion and. A, and 200 millions. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are extracting material flows to maintain the existing stocks. And this is really, really important. Because we, are, we were always thinking about material flows, the extraction, and so forth. And now we are understanding that uh, 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 this is due to the stocks. And also, if you look at the outflows, uh, 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 there, there is demolition of stocks. Uh, 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 there is, uh, um, when you repair and maintain many stocks, we have a uh, waste, so there, there are the, the, the most important waste in the world comes from the stocks as well, not from uh, ordinary consumption. This is not uh, uh, important when you look at, at the mass. So that, that was uh, uh, really, really important. And again, what they try to do when they are uh, doing uh, industrial ecology is to 
close the gap and to, 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 to this is exactly a circular economy, let's say, because this, they, they, they hope to bring the old, the old flows uh, into the, 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 the as an inflow, of course, but uh, uh, they never uh, uh, reach uh, the 100% the uh, uh, percentage. So that's why uh, uh, stocks are important. And to say it, I will skip this one. Well, yeah, of course, in China, it is really crazy. They consume more, uh, I don't know if you are aware of this, they consume more uh, 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 cement in China in three years, in the 2010, than in the US for one century. In the 20th century, no, not in the, in the <laughs> 18th century, in the 20th century. So, uh, so China, of course, is like uh, uh, increasing uh, China material stocks are, are really increasing a lot, but never, 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 never be. Uh, it, it's important not to be a, a nationalist because when you think about the material stocks in China, always remember that China is producing a, a, a trade for us, and the the stocks there is always is also linked to uh, to our uh, uh, capitalism and economy. So it's not like a Chinese and uh, uh, the nationalist uh, uh, perspective is not uh, is not working at all. Well, what is important here? I, I will go uh, a little bit uh, fast. Is that uh, first you can, as an economist, you can think about those uh, uh, material stocks as fixed capital. So there is an accumulation of uh, material stocks which represent an accumulation of fixed capital. Um, and this shaped the future, let's say, uh, in brief. There is a huge inertia and path dependency which is linked to these stocks. We need to repair it. We need a lot of, uh, also a lot of oil, a lot of gas, a lot of fossil fuel to, to uh, and, and the, the, the stock itself supports a lot of uh, social practices which need a lot of uh, energy, of course. So the road support uh, a huge traffic uh, and so forth. And they, they calculated also for other stocks which are very important as m uh, refineries and uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, infrastructure. And just if you, if we, if the existing fossil fuel stocks uh, uh, are used until the the, the end of their, their planned life, uh, uh, planned lifetime, uh, 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 which is linked to the investment, because when you invest one billion, one total uh, energy invest one billion in uh, one uh, uh, project, they want of course uh, uh, a, re a return uh, on the investment. So if we just think about uh, the emissions linked to the, those uh, uh, stocks, uh, specific stocks. Uh, for the following decades, the 1.5 budget uh, will be uh, exceeded. But that, that's for sure. That's like now, today, it's for sure. Like it's tomorrow. But even if you look at the uh, two degrees, uh, I did not mention here. But if you if you look at the two degrees uh, barrier, it's it's like tomorrow or the next week. So this is really really impressive. Like all the stocks, it implies it 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 seems like it implies and it shapes the future. It's it's like it uh, uh, it represents. Uh, of, of course, this inertia is al always social. I, if you imagine a big uh, social revolution and uh, uh, sabotage and uh, uh, all those uh, raffineries uh, 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 being demolished, of course, uh, there is a solution. I mean, it's not like uh, uh, we are not uh, completely uh, uh, lost. Uh, it's always there are, they, they, it's like this because uh, they have the power. <laughs> this is why we always have to keep uh, uh, power relations into account. Well. And um, so, taking those facts into account, there is a, there are many, of course, uh, uh, literature uh, uh, discussing about uh, degrowth, uh, uh, decent living standards, and so forth. I, I we can discuss that uh, later. Uh, um, but they they are really inspired by this because th this represents uh, strong arguments to uh, uh, change completely the the mode of production, of course. Now, uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, what I did in my PhD thesis, which is a, 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 a little bit more precise, and it's not like a macro. Uh, I will go into the detail of uh, this uh, sand and gravel and large infrastructure. So I took this, this, this picture of the material stocks as a question. It's it was questioning myself. So the most important material for the French capitalism is sand and gravel. And no economist ever questioned that, N never. But not even uh, an historian, or, uh, because I talked a lot with historians, they didn't care about sand and gravel. So there was no study about sand and gravel. 
So I th I th uh, uh, my, my idea was to uh, 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 analyze uh, large infrastructure, since they are the most important stocks in France as well, uh, through uh, the lens of sand and gravel. So I will, uh, yeah, I will skip. I will, it is just to mention that you can create your own system. So I, I constructed this system. This is my, let's say, uh, 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 this, is, this, this is my the boundary of my system, which are large infrastructure, mainly roads and railways and so forth. Here I, I decided to include the carriers, and this is the domestic extraction of material flows going to uh, stocks. But I, I also uh, divided stocks between old stocks, existing stocks, and new stocks, which are created all the time. Um, here are a big, big, big activity of one, the large infrastructure, which is earthworks. This is the second most important flows, material flows in the French economy, earth. We are moving earth to produce those large infrastructure, a lot. To, just to produce one meter of uh, highway, uh, 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 you, you need 100 cubic meter of earth, just for one meter. So there are billions and billions and billions, of, and no economic care, no historian cares. There is no literature about earthworks. It's really incredible, and I was surprised. So this is the most, the second most important material flows in the French economy, and why, why nobody cares? Because it, there is no, no no value, of course. But once you you start using this biophysical uh, uh, perspective, you find all those new. Uh, um, material flows and it questions you and you, you find an, uh, 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 new uh, social groups, new uh, power relations and so forth. So, uh, uh, but of course those, this earthwork uh, remains in the, uh, the system because it stays in uh, uh, um, Le Chantier, comme on dit? In the, I forgot. The workplace, yeah, let's say. Um, it's the workplace of the infrastructure, it, it works, no? Chantier? Nobody, nobody knows? Construction yeah, construction site. Yeah, that's good. And if, if you are a Marxist, you can, you can think of the construction site as, uh, uh, I, I, th I thought about that, uh, as the, um, the industry. Marx uh, uh, said uh, to escape from the alienation of the, tr the commodity, which uh, 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 invisibilize social relations, which are uh, 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 embodied in this uh, in the commodity, you need to you need to enter into the industry, into the firm, to see the exploitation, to to see the uh, value added, and so forth. And let's say it, it's just a comparison. Here, I I I, I went into the uh, construction site to see this place, uh, which is quite invisible because we only see the the infrastructure infrastructure once it, it is built. So I I I, I went to this uh, construction site. I, I won't explain how, but it, through archives. Uh, and I found like billions and billions of uh, uh, cubic meter of uh, earth and 20 billions of uh, uh, sand and gravel. And then I found also, but I won't talk about them today, a lot of waste, a lot of hundreds of millions of waste uh, which are uh, 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 used uh, 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 into the infrastructure. Uh, and also there is uh, this flow, but I, I won't talk about it. So I mapped. You know my 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 main flows for uh, my system. You know it was not exhaustive. It was not perfect. It was only to uh, start uh, working with uh, these flows. And once you get that, you can find institutions, social groups, uh, the state, uh, the, the road administrations, uh, archives, the protests, the difficulties, and so forth. So you this is really interesting to 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 get to uh, conflicts and to uh, social aspects. Because all, there are always uh, social groups which are uh, controlling those flows and uh, extracting and managing those flows. So you can always uh, uh, find debates about uh, between them and about uh, uh, those flows. So this is a uh, uh, like a small summary of what I uh, I did. And so this is the domestic extraction in France. So it, it's just to recall that, of course, like in the world, the rest of the world, the uh, domestic extraction of sand and gravel is the most important one by far. Uh, um, this is per capita. So uh, there was, it was multiplied by seven uh, in the f during the 40s period. And then it, it's quite stable with uh, some uh, decrease and increase. And it's about six or seven ton per person per year. So every French citizen is consuming six or seven ton of sand and gravel for 50 years. <laughs> so it's quite a lot. Uh, it represents, I think, 20 kilo per day. 
So it's uh, as if everyone was consuming 20 kilo of sand and gravel per day. Uh, of course, without uh, uh, knowing it. Um, well, oh yeah, sorry. And this is our last one, but it, it's it's basically the same. It's a comparison between uh, the extraction of sand and gravel with uh, coal or uh, um, iron ore, so big, uh, very important material flows for the French economy. And you see that in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, sand and gravel was nearly uh, uh, not existing. It was really a small material flow. And uh, uh, from the 50s, uh, uh, it began really to, uh, 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 to be exponential. Well, so I, I will just mention a little bit of my, my inquiry. So I, I found a lot of archives about uh, engineers, about uh, uh, the, um, the firms of uh, the sand and gravel firms, about all the, the, <laughs> the cement firms al also, and about many uh, other actors. And what I, I find interesting is if once you begin to, to uh, your inquiry, you find new facts. For instance, I will just mention a few of them. The extraction of sand and gravel in France come from the rivers of France. In the 60s and 70s and 80s, we extracted sand and gravel from the rivers. So there were a th thousands and thousands and thousands of small quarries everywhere in France, everywhere from the Loire, uh, from big, big uh, 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 rivers to very small uh, one. And so th this uh, uh, sand extraction va was very ordinary. Um, but the, uh, with the uh, small companies, so mainly really it was not, today it, it's changed, today you have uh, big uh, multinationals we, which have uh, 200 of carriers of soft, uh, or, or something. Uh, uh, back then it was uh, like really small companies having uh, 3, 5, 10 really small quarries and that's it. And it was really local. The, the distance between the, the quarries and the, the construction site was only 14 kilometers. So they, they, they were more than 12,000 carriers in France in the 70s. In the, uh, in the 50s, there were 20,000 quarries, in, uh, and most of them were in the river, or really close to the river and so forth. And what, as, I was, as I was working on uh, um, this extraction, I found a lot of works about sun extractivism uh, in the global south. In India, in Southeast Asia, in Morocco and so forth, which was very, very interesting and helpful. And those uh, uh, works were uh, mentioning uh, illegal activities and uh, uh, um, like uh, uh, mafias and, uh, and conflicts. And, 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 and I was reading this literature and I was thinking about my own sin. <laughs> and, uh, and I present in my work, in my PhD, and I, I also I published a, a book, if you want, <laughs> uh, about uh, this uh, work. Uh, <laughs> it's not useful <laughs> to mention, but... Um, and I defend that there, 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 there was in France, and there, there is still in France, but it, it's, it's changed a lot, uh, an ordinary extractivism of, of sand. Because I, as I was thinking about this extractivism in the South, and I was reading about the uh, rates, uh, the levels of the extraction uh, uh, abroad, I wrote that in the Mekong in, uh, today, so uh, uh, this is the extraction dredging of the Mekong today, the rate, so this is the rate between the um, natural sediment coming uh, every year into the river and the extraction, the rate is about seven. So I I today in Mekong they are uh, extracting seven times more uh, um, sand and gravel than the natural flow. And I, when I found this fact, I was really surprised because it was really worst in France in the 70s. It was 10 or 12. And it was everywhere. So I, think, I thought, wow, that's strange. But it was really usual, it was ordinary, because small companies, uh, the, the value added is, is really small, it was not illegal, but there were conflicts as well, a lot of social conflicts. So that's why I, I define it as ordinary, not, it's not the extraordinary extractivism as we know it, uh, uh, as I mentioned, it, uh, uh, in, the, in the global south, in South America, I, I'm from Brazil, I, I saw it uh, many times. Uh, which is really brutal, uh, super violent. But this is important for, uh, the, um, for the, the French uh, community and uh, the, the global north. It's to accept that extractivism is not only about the exotic countries abroad with uh, uh, a lot of violence and so forth. It, it's also here, it's really benign. It's in, in Germany, in France, uh, in the UK. 
but it's with other, of course, uh, uh, social groups and other it's in another configuration. And then I analyze how it works and analyze the conflicts and how it, it uh, still remain. It's changed because today it's, uh, um, uh, it's forbidden to uh, uh, dredge the river in France today. You cannot, uh, you can uh, 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 extract from, uh, um, from the, 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 yeah, the side, the, 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 the huh? yeah, the banks and, uh, uh, but not, uh, uh, the, the, the the river itself, so it changed, etc. But uh, uh, that's why I, I I defended this, and you see, I, I found this was quite quite interesting. This is uh, uh, let's say an environmental history of the main material flow of capitalism, and explaining uh, how it's linked to uh, other uh, uh, um, yeah other uh, really important uh, uh, structure of the capitalism, uh, uh, and mainly. Uh, how it's linked to the ecological e unequal exchange. Because when, you, when I was thinking about large infrastructure, so the, the infrastructure are, are uh, absorbing 80% of sand and gravel today. Again, don't think that sand and gravel goes to buildings. Today in France, sand and gravel, uh, 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 only 20% of sand and gravel uh, uh, go to the buildings. Which is surprising. I, I thought that all the buildings were absorbing old sand and gravel, but it's not the case. It's, 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 and it's decreasing for the last decades. And what are those infrastructure? Mainly roads, but also uh, uh, big uh, uh, arbors, uh, airports, uh, 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 and so forth. And when I was thinking about all the large infrastructure, they are all built for the biggest vehicle, the biggest uh, um, ship, and uh, and so forth. And so they, they, for instance, the, the highway is made for the, the trucks. It's not made for a car because it's super, super uh, uh, depth and super rigid and so forth and super large. And so, uh, so that's why you can, you can really relate uh, this uh, ordinary extractivism with the extraordinary extractivism, let's say, because it supports all the, the, uh, the uh, trade flows coming from uh, abroad. So I, I, yeah, this is, I, I just wanted to mention how you can uh, uh, use this social metabolism uh, framework with a more precise uh, uh, flow, with more precise actors, and with more uh, sociology and history uh, than the previous macro explanation, but still linking them, linking your uh, uh, your analysis with uh, the the main p main the, the the large picture, of course. Uh, of course, it was really uh, I, I did this. <laughs> it, I, I, I need I, I yeah. I wish I, I had more time to explain more about this extractivism, but uh, uh, this is what this yeah I, I, I wanted just to show uh, how you can you can deal with social metabolism. So you can select construct your own systems, identify actors, the, the really the main institutions, uh, find the social conflicts which are very really important because they reveal uh, 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 really what's what uh, what's going on and the debates and the political choice. So uh, this is one way to build some, uh, some I think, uh, uh, refreshing analysis of those, uh, those, um, those uh, small flows. Well, um, yeah, to conclude, yeah, I wanted to mention one. Th there are, of course, several limits about uh, social metabolism. But the main one is, of, of course, the quantitative reductionism. That is, since we are only t take talking about tons here, if you have a really, really tiny flows, it, it, it's you can th think that it, it's not uh, uh, worth to uh, uh, analyze it, and it's not the case, of course. Uh, uh, and I always um, mention the nuclear case in France, which is a really tiny flow, but it's with a, a, a huge uh, uh, social uh, uh, impact. So. Um, if you are interested in the nuclear activity and energy in France and so forth, I'm not sure that the social metabolism is the accurate framework. Maybe you, you have you more uh, you need more tools, but uh, so the quantitative reductionism is still uh, really uh, yeah it's a really important limit. Then yeah, as I mentioned, metabolism I think it's a good tool. You can use it as, as a tool, like uh, it reveals uh, a lot of things, and you can then uh, uh, use it al al like a social scientist. But also, it questions, I think, uh, s the, the usual perspective. And so, it, it's not only a tool, but it's also a good way uh, uh, to open new uh, uh, researches. 
Uh, yeah, I already mentioned the inter interdisciplinary uh, uh, aspects. So really, that what I like the most, and today I'm working with mostly with historians. So I, yeah, I, c I work a little bit with uh, macroeconomists, with Marxists, and then with uh, sociologists, now with, with historians. And that's really cool because you can really uh, work with uh, uh, many, many people. Uh, for instance, Gilles uh, Bilen here, and we, we, we could work together as well. And it's not, not that uh, uh, difficult, I think, to uh, bring together a new community with, a new, uh, with many, many science. And that's really, I, I, that's really what I, I like the most uh, uh, with this, uh, uh, d d this uh, research uh, perspective. Then, uh, yeah, there are many open questions. I just, uh, I, I just uh, uh, wrote the, I did the slide a, a few minutes ago, so I just put one question, but there are, of course, thousands of research questions. But uh, here is, like, to conclude with, like, the biggest question of Lefebvre. Lefebvre was a Marxist uh, philosopher and sociologist, and he, he was uh, um, talking about the production of space, so, and th explaining that the capitalism needs to produce its own space to uh, uh, reproduce itself, so to maintain itself. And I think this, uh, this is a nice way to think about material flows, social relations, power relations, because when you think about the physical space, you have, you have all together, you have all the, the material uh, aspects together with the, uh, all the social aspects. So those are uh, really, uh, yeah, this is, for, for, for me, I, I'm, uh, at least, this is uh, uh, one of the, the questions that still remains when I, when I work. Well, I will stop now. Uh, maybe we can go with the questions. Thank you very much, Nell. It was really, really fascinating. So let's go for the questions. We have one here, then there. <coughs> Hello and thanks for this presentation, it was really uh, interesting. Um, I'm Aurélien from France and uh, I wanted to ask you two, two questions. The first one is, um, you talked about Bourdieu at the beginning of the presentation and I wanted to know if there is any uh, attempt at uh, tying together Bourdieu and biophysical economics. And my second question is, uh, you told us that during your uh, PhD thesis you worked with uh, regulationists, if I remember correctly. And uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, what is the state of the research program that you tried to carry out with a regulationist? And uh, if you could uh, give us some details about it. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Friederike from Germany. Um, I have a question regarding the data for uh, biophysical flows. Like, has the research progressed so far that there's like a bit of a global database um, like that is public or what is the data availability? Like also if any of us are interested in working with this kind of topic. Hi, I'm Isabella from Brazil. And I was really interested about uh, what you said about inequality of stock. And I was wondering, like, your view if, uh, like, it on the how to maintain the stocks of roads, if it, it's possible to have, like, degrowth, for example, in Europe or core countries and, like, still maintain those infrastructures? I know, very ambitious question. I wanted to know your opinion. Okay, so uh, thank you for uh, all the questions. Um, very, 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 very huge. <laughs> uh, tough. Um, I will start with the data. Um, so yeah, th there are uh, many, many uh, um, databases. Uh, the, the UN uh, has a database for uh, trade. It's called the ComTrade database from 62. Um, there are database for many countries, so uh, national countries. I, I, I did a database for, I, I, I have a database for France, there is a database for uh, the US, Japan, uh, many, many countries. From, usually from the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the 20th century, but depending on the database, sometimes you have uh, only the main aggregated flows, sometimes you have more detailed flows, so it depends, but uh, yeah, yeah, th there, there are many, many databases, and you, there are also um, uh, input-output databases, uh, because you, you can 
to compute uh, material footprints and ecological footprints, you, you will need them. Uh, th th they are based on the Leontief uh, 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 program matrix. So, um, so, the, and so yeah, basically there are a lot of databases, uh, and they try to, and of, of course the um, Eurostat, so the European Commission, uh, they produce a lot of data. I think s since the 70s, I think. But uh, for instance, for France, uh, there I, I just had I just found one database when I began my work. I just found one database from 90, from 1990. So I basically I had nothing. I, I did I needed to collect everything. Um, well, yeah, um, it's not so difficult at uh, at the national level. Then, if you want to answer a more precise research question then it begins to be really tough. And, and, and it's really important to not adopt that nationalist uh, uh, methodological uh, 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 perspective because, I, again, it will frame your analysis and it will, uh, uh, it's really, it, it, it's really uh, important to, to have this in, into your mind. Um, so you can also construct your own database and focusing on more tiny, uh, uh, um, tiny flows, depending on what are you interested in, you, you can find uh, material flows from uh, the industries or from uh, uh, a specific uh, um, statistics uh, uh, administration. Uh, uh, I don't know if you are interested in housing or in uh, park or forest. You can focus on more specific aspects, and and I think this it, it can be useful. Um, so yeah, but at the national level, since states are, uh, are, co are collecting national data uh, of course uh, we have the, 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 the we are we are subjected we are we are, <laughs> we are uh, a little bit uh, uh, um, constrained by, by the, 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 the administrations that collected the data and to escape that is it's a bit difficult but you, you there are plenty of really nice work that I uh, 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 doing it. So, uh, and if you are interested, you can send me an email, and I can, I can send you uh, many websites, and 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 yeah. Uh, also for France, uh, I, I know really well the, uh, the all the, the the database for France. Um, now about um, the degrowth of roads. Um, well, again, um, the fact is that there. This is not only a technical uh, uh, question, and I, I found that super interesting because when you hear about engineers, they will say, "Yeah, uh, this is the lifetime of a road, and it lasts I don't know 30 years, let's say, and we you need to repair it every 10 years." But I'm not. I do not agree. It depends on the use. How you how do you use? And the so, so the social practices, uh, the the choice of uh, 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 the roads. If you only bike uh, on a road, you can use it for a millennia. <laughs> uh, uh, but if you uh, uh, if you uh, like use it for uh, super heavy trucks, like the European uh, Union uh, is uh, uh, um, considering now the 60 ton trucks, uh, you are basically destroying the the, wor the road, and you need to repair it, uh, let's say, every six years. And if you think about it uh, again. So it, it means that uh, it depends on the trade flows. So again, it depends on free trade. And it depend, this is the super uh, uh, global structure that I, 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 I mentioned here uh, uh, for a while, uh, which is really like the most important one, I think, in today uh, capitalism, world capitalism. Uh, um, so you have to question free trade and diminish the, 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 the imported trades and, and it means uh, produce uh, 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 more goods here and uh, 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 export less uh, uh, cereals and uh, uh, change the agriculture. So of course th th those are structural questions and not only a technical one. But um, it would be, it, it would be, yeah, I think it, it's the, the easiest way to think about it. But since when you are, since for instance the European Commission do not question free trade because it's in the constitution of the, the EU, huh? free trade is like, a, the, uh, uh, since they, 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 they don't want to question that, they, they are, their only option is the technical one. 
So they say, yeah, so, and this is the greenwashing discourse. Uh, yeah, we will uh, recycle a lot and we, the, the, the road will be uh, uh, with, uh, I don't know, green, <laughs> green concrete and all those bullshit. And, and b because they don't have any option, because otherwise they, they, will, they would have to question the, the structure of the European Union itself. So uh, they will destroy their only identity. So they are, they are, they are yeah, they, they, are, they only have this uh, technical, uh, um, Answer. Um, then uh, Aurélien, yeah. So I, I, I'm happy that you you <laughs> you noticed Bourdieu, and uh, uh, since um, usually I don't I, I, I don't mention him, but um, I'm really a, a big fan of uh, Bourdieu, and uh, and as I, again uh, as I was uh, uh, really interested in uh, uh, regulation theory, I thought that was super weird that he never. Uh, it's not true actually, but it basically never takes into account any materiality. It's not true because if you look at his first works in Algeria, he talks about the house and how the physical space of the house is produced. And that is exactly how social relations produce some space. So when he, he was thinking about the Algerian house and the gender uh, relations there and how men and women use the house and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and so I I can mention, and I found that a few years ago, and now I'm really really psyched about this because I found one small text of Bourdieu which is called Effet de lieu. Uh, in the in, it's from '93. It's uh, it's called Sight Effect in in uh, in English, and in uh, uh, Effet de lieu he talks about the physical space, and he explains that the physical space is the material materialization of so social relations. Is the Materialized, uh, uh, social relations are materialized in physical space. And that's for me, that's perfect. But uh, now I want to understand how. And he linked that with the habitus and with social fields. And he, but he never did that before. He just mentioned that in this uh, small text, uh, uh, Effet de lieu. And then he just like, this was an idea and then it, it didn't work uh, more uh, uh, on this idea. But for me, this is really, really, really strong because he linked the, uh, 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 he, he explains that the uh, physical space embodied social power and symbolically as well. And he mentioned, for instance, I don't know, if you go to, uh, 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 if you are, uh, if you have some, sorry, I, I will go into the details of Bourdieu's and vocabulary. If you have some habitus, if you are uh, some uh, uh, habitus from a labor uh, class, and if, if you go to a museum, if you, if you go to a palace or uh, to, a, uh, uh, some, to, to the Sorbonne with a lot of gold and so on, you will feel uh, uh, dominated and symbolically dominated by the physical space because the physical space embodied power from uh, the past, from the imperium, from uh, uh, and for me that was really fascinating, for real epiphany. It was really like the, the my, my 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 biggest epiphany in the last years because I, I found that ah oh, now I understand that the if you understand that the physical space and every every physical space affects you and it depends on your habitus and how and, and, and the social relations and power relations which are embodied in the physical space then you have a new perspective and you can you can work as a sociologist with that i think but they they don't do it <laughs> i don't know why i want to discuss with them <laughs> uh, so anyway we, we we could talk to this uh, uh, later if you want but uh, yeah so i'm really really interested but i think no bourdieusian in france do that in, I, I think so. I, I never uh, uh, read any paper, so I'll, I'm quite disappointed. <laughs> and then about the uh, regulation theory program, well, I quite abandoned it um, since, yeah, for me it's a, a really nice framework to think about, to think the world and the macro perspective. And I actually, I can I can uh, uh, tell you that in my PhD thesis, I had Robert Boyer in my uh, uh, my presentation in my uh, jury. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I tried it, a regulationist discussion with him and I was talking about sand and gravel, so it was really funny because uh, he's like the, the well-known super macroeconomist. <laughs> but he's really nice, he really is open-minded and he, he, like, he really liked interdisciplinary research and archives and he was really, yeah, he was, he was uh, really happy with m my work. And so, I, 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 what I did, and this, is <laughs> this, wa this was my 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 really modest uh, <laughs> contribution to the regulation theory and to those uh, 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 to, to to this uh, uh, 
lack to the lack of the biophysical aspects in the regulation uh, theory, I, I propose to uh, think about the um, the spatial practice of the an, accu an accumulation regime. So I think that there are accumulation regimes described and analyzed in the regulation theory, the Fordism and ca uh, neoliberal capitalism, and I think that the set of re social relations that characterize Fordism produce some kind of space. So I, I, I said, and I presented that in my PhD thesis, that Fordism had its own uh, spatial practice. And then the uh, uh, neoliberal capitalism had, uh, has actually its own uh, uh, spatial practice. So this is a new notion, a new concept that I, I proposed, of course, for the discussion. Uh, but well, and I, I defended it using some works and using also this uh, production, production of infrastructure and the, pro and the regulation that we, you need for the careers and for other social, sp uh, 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 physical spaces. Um, but well, it's, I don't know if it's a research program, if, if I found many uh, students that can help me, but I mean, alone it's only a proposition, it's only, a, I just propose that, uh, but it's, too fragile at the moment. It's like only maybe maybe it's not robust. Uh, well, I, I I don't know. But I found that interesting again because I I found that uh, uh, using the physical space, you have uh, all together uh, the materiality, the 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 the, uh, uh, the material flows and the social relations together, and the symbolic and the material together. And if you only think about natural resources, for instance, the natural resource paradigm and so forth, the materials are abstract. So they don't affect social uh, relations. You, you don't feel that, how, d how do they, they uh, uh, how, how, how can they uh, embody uh, uh, power relations if they are only natural resources? And I, I found that using the, the, the physical space were, was useful for that. So this was my proposition. Uh, it is my, my PhD thesis, but I don't know. I, I'm not like, uh, I don't want to build my own theory, uh, regulationist theory. Uh, I'm, it was just my modest contribution, but I, I found that was useful. <laughs> I still think. Hello, I'm Andresa from Brazil. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, very interesting. Um, I wanted to know more about the policy implications of uh, ecological and eco exchange. I think for this problem, uh, the neoclassical economists would say that we need to internalize the the external uh, negative externalities. Maybe the industrial ecologists would say uh, we need to do structural structure uh, change and move to industry, be less uh, dependent, dependent on uh, export of uh, intensive natural resource commodities. So what would be the proposal for uh, by the, the, the School of Ecological and Eco Exchange? Um, yeah, basically this. Uh, th thank you so much. Uh, very fascinating. Uh, I'm Jan from Germany, um, and I wanted to ask you more about sand and gravel. <laughs> um, so, you you say that it is a more of a of a recent um, phenomenon that <coughs> sand and gravel has grown so, uh, like the 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 flow has grown so big also compared to to other flows like fossil uh, fuels. And I was wondering if you have any idea what could be the structural drivers, uh, also more really like the, the big picture of capitalism. Why does uh, the current late stage of capitalism that we're in need so much uh, sand and gravel? Hi, uh, my name is Dominic and I'm going to ask you a question that's very different from the other two, which are already different from each other. Um, I have a question about the uh, social representation of social metabolism, specifically if you think about uh, something like economic, uh, democratic economic planning or economic democracy in general. And I mean, you make this point, I mean, in this slide here that, um, you know, the reduction uh, of the social metabolism to a particular quantitative variable is very limiting and I mean you talked about nuclear but you can also think like raw like other critical raw materials where the the spatial footprint is not at all proportional to the actual material flow or things like this um, do you think that 
you know, is it just a simple matter of, of multivariables, uh, like multiple variables? Um, is it a matter of a uh, representation through some kind of currency form that's directly, that has direct physical ties? Uh, you know, do we have a system just based on labor hours? Um, or, uh, or do we just need uh, just a more like directly, maybe qualitative social engagement with the governance of these flows? But in some way or another, these flows have to be represented socially to be negotiated. So I guess, yeah, I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Finish because I don't want you to miss your train. But can I have a very uh, final yeah. one? Yes. <laughs> uh, hello, thank you. It was very cool. My name is Marie Noël. I'm from Germany. Um, I have two questions, in fact. So I was surprised by the chart that you showed about the uh, history of friends and imports and exports of uh, material, and uh, that the bio biomass just increased in the in the last years and I was wondering like I, I would have expected it to ha happen ha like earlier like during the the second food uh, world or like world food agricultural uh, regime with more yeah where France was exporting more and um, then the second question uh, regard um, I don't know if I understand you correctly when you were talking about stocks and uh, of material and uh, our our um, climate uh, our yeah uh, 1.5 target and uh, two point uh, two two degrees target of, of um, climate change um, is it because the 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 stocks required the renewal and um, if if so uh, should the 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 um, sorry <laughs> the scenario buildings for the future or will um, the IPPC and um, where we build modeling uh, models for the future um, take into account stocks um, and not only look at the flows of what uh, nations contribute but in, in terms of, of, of flows but also what nations contribute in terms of stocks <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much. I have only 10 minutes, so I will answer really briefly. I, I, I'm sorry uh, uh, if I, I, I n do not answer everyone. Um, so I, wi I will start with uh, sand and gravel and the structural drivers. Uh, well, <laughs> tough question, um, but there are several answers. You can uh, look at the David Harvey's tradition, which and the spatial fix uh, uh, answer. So, in, Dav in David Harvey's conception of uh, capitalism, to avoid uh, over uh, accumulation crisis, uh, you need to fix <laughs> capital, and r it really means fixed uh, <laughs> capital. Uh, um, to uh, uh, so to invest a lot of capital uh, into some uh, 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 infrastructure, let's say. So uh, there is now a growing literature about this. Uh, special fix uh, and with this uh, uh, ecological uh, dimension and social metabolism uh, I can send you uh, um, those uh, articles I'm not totally convinced uh, since I see large infrastructure uh, large infrastructure everywhere and not really correlated with crisis and so I think this is a super meta explanation but well it's a discussion of course um, and at least they have structural drivers so at least it's good for them but uh, well it's well, it's a, it's a whole discussion. Um, um, then, oh yeah, of course, it's it's linked to uh, as I said, the the fact that it d does not decrease is linked to rep uh, repair and ma maintenance. So even if today in France we do not build a lot of infrastructure, we just maintain maintain them all the time, uh, and that's interesting because it's not directly linked to a structural. Uh, 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 a special stru uh, social structure. Well, it is, but uh, I mean, it's like it, it seems uh, quite uh, technical and uh, uh, um, due to the uh, mass of the infrastructure. Then, um, to, uh, I want I will answer to uh, uh, representation and reductionism. Um, so, well, yeah, 
Uh, you can add many other cr uh, criteria. Uh, for instance, for nuclear, you can add uh, uh, joule energy, and uh, you have uh, uh, our land, and uh, you can uh, uh, you can think of. But it will ne never be sufficient for me. Uh, it's I, I use always those uh, indicators are as tools, and I found them interesting just to uh, uh, objectify something. But it it never tells you, it never tells you how it affects people and how it affects social groups and how our people are. Uh, uh, and that's the point, but um, so, but I we need to be really careful with this. And today there is a um, there is a headlong rush with uh, 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 the, 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 um, those kind of indi uh, biophysical indicator. I, I think there are even startups that are producing their own database, and to uh, uh, and so they are framing the world and explaining all the world and all the let's say environmental issues only through uh, a lot of new indicators and indicators, as if we can control that. And I can link that to your uh, question about planning. Because uh, today in France, for instance, there, are, there is a, a socialist planning uh, proposition, eco-socialist planning proposition, and they, are, they want to use all these indicators as well. And saying, now we want to have a biophysical perspective on, on the economy and to use uh, uh, those uh, indicators. And I think there is a risk to be a bit naive and to, to think that, uh, well, uh, once, once we have a lot of indicators, uh, 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 we will, uh, 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 the, the management, uh, we the governance will be super good and uh, the discussion will be uh, uh, less conf conflictual. I, I don't think at all. <laughs> uh, and I, I see a, lead, a small danger uh, to, uh, to focus too much on this kind of representation. And you can really, uh, uh, there is, uh, I forgot the name now, but there is, uh, there are, uh, there is a, a website, ah shit, I forgot the name, but there is a website uh, which is uh, discussing, for instance, um, deforestation in the, uh, in the Amazonian uh, forest and showing uh, the soja flows and uh, explaining uh, the, 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 the land and, uh, but all with satellite uh, images and indicators and, uh, and beautiful graphs and so forth, but and but uh, it simplifies too much. I mean, in, in the end, uh, so it's. It, I think there is a, a, a little bit of risk. We, we we feel that we are understanding more because we have uh, a lot of data, but uh, uh, it, it doesn't. It does not give you an analysis of the of the situation. I think so. But it's quite interesting to see the growing of these uh, 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 representations, really, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a new framing of the discussion. So, uh, well, um, sorry, it's a, a bit, uh, it's a quick answer, but uh, I, I, I need to go. Um, now about the ecological unequal exchange. So, well, yeah, that, that's r really funny because uh, uh, there are still today, I think, neoclassic uh, 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 economics which are producing uh, econometric work showing that trade is super good for the ecology and for the environment. And they, 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 they explain green trade and let's, uh, let's uh, 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 insist on trade and super good and uh, we did not insist uh, uh, sufficiently uh, <laughs> and we need to have less barriers, uh, etc. So the free trade paradigm is still there. Um, there are also people, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, 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 asking for, uh, uh, to internalize externalities and blah, blah, blah. But this is this this uh, uh, the internalization of externalities never touched the power the power relations itself and the structure itself uh, is 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 uh, the same for uh, if you think about uh, tax uh, uh, tax when you tax uh, rich people you don't change uh, the, the the wage labor relation <laughs> you just say that they 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 need to receive a little bit m less it's uh, like ethical but you don't change the power they still have the power to produce wh whatever they want for profits so. Uh, uh, well, so yeah, uh, uh, so the, the only proposition, <laughs> uh, I mean, realistic proposition is to be super anti-capitalistic, I guess. <laughs> I mean, wh what else? I mean, it's like a super strong uh, 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 structure of, of our world. So, uh, well, um, and now I will uh, finish with, um, yeah, the, the, the biomass uh, 
So, uh, well, in, in the French literature, it's quite well known. So there are many works explaining uh, how uh, uh, the state uh, uh, invested and support a lot uh, uh, this export-oriented uh, agriculture from the the, the 50s, and uh, it, it the, the 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 French territory completely changed. So. And, and you see this huge gro growth of uh, 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 here of exports, and it's mainly cereals. And uh, France is now the second second uh, 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 exporter in, in the Europe of cereals, um, and it changed completely the the, the country. Of course, uh, it's it's well known that there are many works about also. Uh, uh, I, I I I cite here uh, Gilles Bilen about uh, uh, um, uh, nitrogen and. Uh, uh uh, azot uh, and uh, and other other uh, uh, other flows and wi which is linked also with a lot of uh, environmental issues of course uh, um, for the French French uh, French speaking uh, people here the algue verte and so forth and uh, and yeah and for ab about to 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 finish ab about this question uh, the stocks and the 1.5 uh, uh, so, the, the um, articles are showing that if, for instance, they extract uh, the oil which is uh, uh, predicted by the model of the investment uh, of one big company, and if they uh, uh, burn it, because it will be burned uh, in the year, uh, just that, without even constructing new refineries, without co without speaking about coal or gas, uh, uh, yeah, we will uh, uh, 1.5 uh, will be uh, uh, exceeded, and this is really like in a two y like next year or like in, in very so the 1.5 it's like it's over, then uh, the two there is a debate about the two degrees and. Um, your question was about models. If we, if we can add uh, stocks into the in the models for modeling, the, the ah, sorry, I I understood that because well, I can say that today many many works are uh, taking uh, this path dependency into account and saying that uh, we are we are we have a, a really a small uh, uh, path and. Uh, well, to uh, to to avoid uh, the the worst, <laughs> and uh, they still believe it's possible, uh, but uh, uh, it it it's not it's not a technical question. That's that's the fact, um, of course. Um, well, that's it. Sorry, I need to go. So, but thank you very much for your questions. We're very. <laughs>